You want to make a good first impression. There's some things you should avoid. Don't do these things. And the first one is don't touch your face. That's right. Touching your face is kind of a soothing mechanism. If you talk to a body language expert, they will tell you if you're touching your face or maybe your hair, even playing with your arm, that's kind of a soothing mechanism. And it is showing nervousness. It's showing a lack of confidence. I once saw an interview with Brad Pitt, who is admittedly one of my favorite actors. And he was in a professional setting. And the whole interview, he was touching his face and doing this. And it really was not very professional. I was kind of surprised. And I found that if you're touching your face, rubbing your nose, it just does not come across as very confident or very professional. Don't put your hands in your pockets or cross your arms. These things are very common and you just naturally want to do them if you're standing up or in front of somebody, especially putting your hands in a folded position. That creates kind of a barrier. It just doesn't look good. You're better off just having your hands down beside you. It'll create a better first impression than either folding your arms or having your hands in your pockets. Don't chew gum. I know it's pretty well known. Chewing gum kind of looks awkward and it creates a bad impression, especially in a business type of setting. Also, be careful with a breath mint. You might want to throw in a Tic Tac or a Lifesaver or some other breath mint. And you're well-intentioned. You want to obviously have breath that smells good. But if you're chewing on that, if you're making some sounds and grinding your teeth, bad first impression. And so avoid that. Avoid the gum. Avoid the breath mints. However, that does bring up another issue here. You absolutely want to smell good. You want to avoid smelling bad. And so this comes into play with your breath. Make sure that you've obviously brushed and that you've used mouthwash. Find a way to make sure your breath smells good. That can be a huge turnoff. And likewise, if you are wearing fragrance, be careful not to use too much. Now, I personally love fragrance, but if I'm going to be meeting somebody, making a first impression on somebody, I want to dial that back a little bit. Now, it doesn't mean you don't wear any. You can still wear a little bit. Just make sure that it doesn't project out. And also, just be very aware of your smell, your body odor. You know, you may have to do the old sniff check. And obviously, most people don't have this problem. But where I find that you need to be careful is if you're on a road trip. If you're on a road trip for a few days and your clothes have been in your suitcase, you might think that they're clean and that they smell good, but you put it on and you might be projecting out this bad smell that's going to give a bad first impression. So make sure when you get to your hotel, air out your clothes, do a sniff check, maybe use one squirt of fragrance, and make sure that you just smell good. These are common sense things, but you would be surprised at how often a bad smell or the wrong smell is going to make a bad first impression. Don't crack your knuckles. This might seem obvious, and most of us aren't sitting there cracking our knuckles as we're introducing ourselves. But where I find this is you're in a meeting and it's kind of, it's a soothing tendency to crack your knuckles and, you know, sometimes make a sound. Just avoid that. That creates kind of a weird situation if you're cracking your knuckles in front of someone. It's not very professional. So avoid doing that. Don't be late. This might be the number one thing. The number one way you can create a bad first impression is by being late to a predetermined, pre-scheduled meeting. You also look bad if you show up in a situation where you're entering a room late. Even if you're not the presenter, if you're interrupting and people turn around and see that it's you that's walking into a classroom late, that doesn't look good either. Now, being late may be acceptable in a social situation. If you're going to a party at 10 p.m. on a Friday night, sure, you can be socially late and show up 20 minutes after it starts. But do not do that with a business meeting. Call ahead if you have to and let the person you're meeting with know that you're going to be a little bit late or you're going to be cutting it close. 
and that'll inoculate you against an embarrassing situation. Don't be too early to a pre-scheduled meeting either. Now, if you're presenting somewhere or you're setting up for something, of course, you can be as early as you want. But if you have a pre-scheduled, predetermined meeting, say at 10 a.m., you do not want to show up a half hour early. You will make the people you're meeting with a little bit uncomfortable. This is especially true if you have an interview situation where somebody might be interviewing another candidate and it'll disrupt the flow. I've had this happen many times where somebody shows up and they're excessively early and it creates an awkward situation. It really does not make a good first impression if you are too early to a predetermined meeting, whether it be an interview or a sales meeting. You wanna be about 10 minutes early, maybe 15 at the most, but don't just show up way ahead of time because it's gonna make your host a little bit uncomfortable. Don't apologize too much. Apologizing may seem natural if something is going wrong, if you're late or something is breaking down or there's a mess being made, but you can apologize too much. And generally, I just think, unless it's a real serious situation, there's not a need to apologize. I'll give you an example of where this has gone overboard. I was once with a partner and we were giving a sales presentation. And as part of that presentation, we were giving a software demonstration. And as we were loading up the software, the software was having a tough time booting up. And it took what felt like forever. In reality, it was about 90 seconds. But during this 90 seconds, my partner kept offering these apologizing, you know, he's, this never happens. I'm so sorry. Sorry to waste your time. And finally it booted up and everybody got to do the demonstration and it was quickly forgotten. And oftentimes that's the way it is. Something happens and it's usually quickly forgotten anyway. And by apologizing too much, like I say, you, you don't look as confident and as polished. So just be careful. Instead of apologizing, you might just want to thank somebody for their patience because oftentimes the situation is not nearly as embarrassing for them as it is for you. So don't offer too many of these apologies. Be confident and just move forward. Whatever mistake is made will soon be forgotten.